Hi Pottery Peeps. Back in the studio, my favorite place to be in the whole world, and I apologize if there's a lot of outside noise. It's quite warm here today, so I have all the doors open, and we are on a uh, the canyon road that heads up to Hollow Creek Canyon, hence Hollow Creek Pottery. By the way, I'm Tiffany. <laughs> I guess I don't introduce myself very often. Um, so there could be um, some noise, and hopefully it's not too bad. It's just unbearable to, it'll just be a sweat box in here if I shut everything down or shut the doors and so forth. So if you've been following me on um, Instagram or Facebook, you know that I had to cancel the sale that was supposed to happen today. And I told you I was going to do a studio tour. That's not going to happen today. Instead, we're going to make some sushi plates. And, um, you know, life happens. And the easiest thing to do is to roll with it. And sometimes things have to be rescheduled and the best thing about having your own business you can reschedule those things and put what's important first my husband is doing much better um, I guess I didn't explain really what happened to him um, he was helping me out with uh, weeding flower beds and he had his big uh, steel toed work boots on but somehow he got a piece of metal uh, stuck in his foot a pretty long piece of thin wire and um, I'm thinking it he probably got it on his socks and then he put his foot into the boot um, He thought he had gotten bit or had a sticker uh, My husband has a really high tolerance for pain, which is sometimes good and sometimes really bad anyway within two days he had a raging staph infection and four days in the hospital uh, surgery and then he had a um, major reaction to the antibiotic. He's on a pick line. We have home health coming every day doing IVs and and so forth trying to save his toes and his foot and his life. So he's doing much better. Things are looking really good today. Um, the home health nurse, I'm super super lucky, is actually my daughter-in-law and uh, so she's keeping tabs, cracking, helping me crack the whip with him. So with everything going on it just it just was too too much to throw together a sale and and clean my studio so um that's sometimes how it happens and i'm very very blessed and uh grateful to have my own business and to be able to make those choices and i can just say nope not gonna work so we'll reschedule it it'll be better later so that's what we're gonna do so um today <laughs> I'm going to show you how I did these sushi plates. When I did the kiln reveal on these, I knew they'd be popular. You know, it's interesting. If I fall in love with it, I know it's going to be popular. And I fell in love with this design. Um, I am a Gemini, so I'm kind of a... Um, really love the water and love the tropics, love Hawaii. Um, grew up in Alaska, fishing all the time on the ocean. So I love anything to do with the ocean. And... So these are just right up my alley. And I'm going to have to have a set of these. We eat a lot of sushi ourselves. And I just threw the little bowl. And I just threw the little bowl off the hump. But, so I'm going to show you how I made these. So this is an actual plastic dish. And I can't tell you where I got it. I look at thrift stores all the time um, for dishes, different shapes, you know, unique type things. And that's where I picked this up at. I made a bisque plate, so it's smaller than the original because of course they shrink. And so this is the one that I use to make the plates off of. Um, I Basically, I, I, if I find a plastic plate or some sort of a dish, I actually have another one over here that I picked up you know, a platter, and then I have made a this form. So I have all these different forms in the studio. So keep an eye out for interesting shapes and so forth. My favorite way to do platters and plates is the slump mold method, which is what I'm going to show you today. So I'm going to go ahead and make, I need more than one plate because I need to make a lot of these. So I'm going to make another, probably we'll end up eventually making four so that I can make four plates at a time. So I'll make four bisque molds to use. But I'll go ahead and lower you down and I'm just gonna show you how I make the bisque mold and then we'll make the plate. Let me get you down low. Okay. I got a slab here. Let's see, where's my knife? Actually, I 
Actually, I don't even have my stuff set up. Hold on a second. <laughs> This is 3 8 I've already compressed it. It's straight out of the bag. And so I'm just going to kind of eyeball how much I'm going to need here. And actually, that might not be enough. But we'll give it a try. Oh. There's one other thing I've got to do first. This is WD-40. You can use cooking spray, too. I like WD-40. <laughs> um... I don't know, I'm kind of one of those weird ones. I really like the smell of WD-40. So anytime you have a non-porous surface that you're making a mold out of, even pottery that's glazed that you want to make a mold out of, spray it with a release um, like WD-40 or cooking oil. I found that WD-40 tends to work better for me with than cooking oil. And so... I just tend to go with that. And I do believe that I probably don't have enough. <laughs> I don't, I didn't cut it. So we're gonna go ahead and use the big one. When I do WD-40, I don't have to do, I don't have to mess with any plastic wrap or anything like that. And I really like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut off my excess to make it easier to work with. And then, one of the first things I do, is, especially when I'm doing a slump mold, drop it. And then that kind of just gets it down into the mold. You can drop it a couple of times. <laughs> and then I'll come back with the sponge and then just push that into the mold Make sure I get into the corners really well. I'll go around the edges here. Just make sure I got a good form. See how simple that is? This is really, really a great way to get cheap forms that are just unique to your studio. And then I've got this little wire cutter. And I believe I bought it from Bill Van Gilder. Um, billvangilder.com and I'll just come in hold it straight up and down and go around the form like that I usually do the corners last because I want to spend a little time on those but I just come here and lop off the corner and we're almost done with this. And then I'll just soften the edge. And that's it. The next thing I'm gonna do, these are socks that I've stolen from my husband and filled with kitty litter. And I'll weigh it down and I'll let it set up. And that's it, it's done. And then I'll just, it dries out and it gets bis fired and then I get to use it. So, I'm gonna get another slab ready and show you how I do the turtle. I have another slab rolled out. Actually, it's just the pieces that I wedged back out or wedged back up and and rolled out and what I'm gonna do now so I'm gonna take this is the bisque one so I'm going to give myself kind of an idea how much clay I need to work with always do more than you think you're gonna need because it's gonna have to slump in here and since we're warm today Get some plastic out so I can do something with this later. Oh, 
Okay, so now that I have my, um, what I'm working with, my slab, this is the fun part, um, cause now I get to decorate this slab and I'm going to decorate it while it's flat here on the table. So I know it's going to fit probably right. I need to be my end right in there. So it depends, you know, however you want to do the turtle or you could use any stencil. And I can't tell you where I got this. It's one I've had in the studio for a long time. So I'm just going to actually hold on. Don't want to make this mistake. Get your cornstarch out. <laughs> put cornstarch where you're going to put that stencil. So I'm just going to dust this. So my stencil is going to come up or it'll be able to come up. So I'm going to lay my stencil down. I'm going to get my pony roller. And I'm going to just lightly roll it in there. This is different than when I did the place where I rolled it in pretty heavy. I just kind of want to anchor this. In the clay. This will keep my slip that I'm going to put in here from bleeding under. Okay. So this is just my slip, studio slip, from throwing extra stuff from hand building, and I have blended it up with an immersion blender and then um, sieved it in a wire mesh. I think I did it uh, 80 mesh, maybe, is what I have. And it's kind of pudding-like. So I'm going to paint the stencil. And get it all over the stencil. This would be a really good project if you're teaching anybody. It's a really fun one. It's fairly, I would say, an easy one. There's a lot of kids home this summer. You know, if you do pottery, you might want to think about opening up your studio and doing some classes for kids. I know some of my students are doing that. I think it's a great idea. Shout out to Sandy and Kate. <laughs> Both of them are doing that. Okay, so I'm going to let that set up. Um, I don't want to touch it. I want it to actually set up because I want to do another coat. So while that's setting up, I'm going to roll out another slab because I have other stuff I want to do too. Okay, this is tacky. It's not dry, but it's tacky. So I can go ahead and put another coat on. I like two good coats. The first one always just sinks in to the stencil and I want it to be raised. It'll give um, kind of like you slip trailed it. You could even add slip trailing to this and change up the stencil a little bit, adding more design if you want it. That would be a fun thing to do too. So basically you want it thick enough that I don't see the stencil under it. So now we let that dry. <laughs> I actually have like three different projects going on at the same time. When I'm doing something like this, if I don't have more than one going on, I will rush the project and usually mess it up. So it's smart to have you know, time, time out your projects so that you've got one drying, one you're making, and one you're finishing. All right, we'll be back in a bit. All right, still really tacky, but I want to um, see if I can lift it off. So I'm just going to take a corner and carefully... Then I just 
put that stencil right in some water so that I can get the slip off of it. And then if I got any slip on the outside of the stencil where I didn't want it, I'm going to try and get that off. And sometimes you get a little line from the stencil, so I'll rub that out too. But it looks pretty good. So now I need to put it in the mold without messing up the stencil. And this is one of the reasons why I really like slump molds for this. Pull this in so you can see what I'm doing. So I kind of position it where I want it. I'm going to go ahead and cut some of this excess off so I'm not messing with that. So um, with this, you can kind of, you don't want to drop your mold, <laughs> but I do want to drop the clay in there. <laughs> I can come in and press it in, of course, on the side that I don't have the stencil. But I can't really press this in very well without ruining that stencil. But I at least have it in here drying now. So I'll let that dry a little bit more. I've got a line there from the stencil. I'll rub that out. Where did I put? can go ahead and cut it though, so I'll go ahead and do that. So I'll basically get the plate as done as I can until that slip is dry enough, or basically completely dry. And then I will put weights in it, just like I did the mold that I made earlier. Clean up my sponge. I'll worry about the back side um, after it's leather hard and I can handle it. But I do want to come in and smooth the top now. And I will come in with my finger and press down as much as I can without distorting the stencil. Got a little piece of something right there. So you see how easy these are? They just take time. You know, you just have to manage your time. Clay is pretty much all about managing time. And so we'll let that set up. I'll throw weight bags on it and set it over on the shelf. And then this fire it. This one was glazed with uh, Clayscapes Shadow Blue and Coastal Blue here. And then I did a swipe well, they did overlap each other, and then I did a swipe of um, Spectrum's Pearl White. I absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. So, um, give these a try. I mean, it, make yourself some slump molds out of, go to your th local thrift store or go through your kitchen. <laughs> I've done that too, where I go through my kitchen and find stuff that, um, well, you know, I don't cook anymore. <laughs> Actually, I cook around the holidays. That's basically it. Um, I just, um, I'm out here. I'm cooking out here. <laughs> so might as well use those things in the studio, you know, get some use out of them. So, and there's so many different Tupperware things and 
and even aluminum foil things that um, um, you can use uh, to make your own molds and have them in your studio to use over and over and over again. And it just, it's cost effective, it's fun to do, and I hope that um, you take some of these um, things that um, I've shown you today and put them to use in your own studio. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing next week. We, I'm pretty much not making any major decisions on anything at this point and we're just going day to day so it's a gonna be a surprise be a surprise to me too and my daughter um her baby is due next on the 10th which is a week from today so it's her third child so she could go at any time so i'm not making any plans because i'm going to have another grandchild so Anyway, I hope you're doing well. Hope your family's well. Give them all hugs. Tell them you love them. And I hope you can get muddy this week. See you later.